Hey y'all, welcome back or welcome if you were new. Today I'm gonna to share with you how to create this more dramatic warm spring or true spring makeup tutorial. Throughout the video, I'm gonna have a few different images sprinkled through showing some of the differences that we'll have within the warm or true spring, how it compares to the other spring seasonal color palettes, plus how it kind of contrasts and can play with its sister palette, which is warm or true autumn. Without further delay, let's get right into creating this warm spring makeup look. Getting started with the true spring or warm spring makeup tutorial. I've already done my complexion and that's mostly because it took me a little bit to get the right color. The products I use for my face and everything else will all be listed in the description box for your convenience. But just to give you a quick overview, I prepped my skin with the Can Make Mermaid Skin UV Gel. This is an SPF 50 plus with a P rating of four plus. This is a mostly translucent sunscreen with the slightest golden reflect. So that's going to help neutralize the more cool, ruddy tone of my skin. And then I use the Bobbi Brown Vitamin Enriched Face Base and Vitamin Enriched Eye Base to help prep my skin because I needed to go with a little bit more base makeup than I would normally use because I'm having to alter the color of my skin to make it warmer. My skin is quite cool and pink, opposite of what we would find in a warm spring makeup look as people who fall into the warm spring color palette are very warm toned. Anyone in the warm or true autumn or warm true spring are going to be very warm yellow golden tone. I fall into the summer category so that means I have more cool undertone skin. However, that further breaks down into I fall into the light spring so that means I have a neutral cool undertone which means I have a dash of a little bit of a yellow neutrality in my skin. However, it's not warm enough to wear these warm spring colors easily so I use a foundation with a little bit more coverage, and that is the Sephora Best Skin Ever Foundation in shade 11.5P. And then I mixed in a little bit of the LA Girl Pro Color Foundation Mixing Pigment. Revlon Skin Awakening 24-Hour 5-in-1 Concealer in shade 005 Fair, which is going to be a little bit more of a neutral warm shade, so more of a yellow neutral beige color to add some brightness to my center points in my face to make things feel more cohesive. Now I need to add some more of the characteristic traits of warm or true spring to my makeup look. Elf Halo Glow Liquid Filter in shade 1 Fair to my skin. This is going to have a warm, slightly orange tone. So I'm going to apply this on top of my foundation to add brightness to my skin. One of the characteristics of spring is going to be an overall feeling of brightness. If you compare that to the opposite season, which is autumn, autumn is more muted. There's a higher influence of gray tones. Spring is going to have a higher quality of lightness and brightness to the palette. I want to start adding some of that brightness to the skin by using a very lightweight liquid illuminator. You'll find people who fall into the spring color seasons, whether that is going to be the bright clear spring, warm true spring, spring or light or soft spring. They all have a little bit of this natural glow to their skin. With makeup, without makeup, they just have this look that they are naturally glowing. Eye color is going to be a little bit brighter. It's going to have more of a yellow undertone, whether it's blue, green, brown, whatever color it is. It's going to have more of that yellow influence, which is going to make it look brighter. Hair color, stronger yellow or golden influences that make it appear a little bit more vibrant. Skin tone, warm tone. So it it has that vibrancy to it. Warmer colors tend to look naturally light and bright. I will explain a little bit more in just a moment, but let's add some more color. So I've got that brightening on. So that's gonna add more of that translucency to the skin, which is gonna make it appear like it's glowing from within, which is a huge characteristic of the color season. Now I want to add some color to my skin because my lip color, more muted mauve pink, which is 
not something you would find in the color palette. So I'm gonna use the number one de Chanel Red Camellia Revitalizing Lip and Cheek Balm in shade number two, Healthy Pink. This is going to be more of a neutral pink. So I'm gonna start just applying it on the lower lip and you can see even that small amount has warmed my lip color up compared to the upper lip, which has nothing on it. This just looks more in balance with my overall skin tone. I'm gonna go ahead and take a little bit of this color and I'm gonna apply it to the cheek and then use my brush just to blend it out. If you are someone who is, I would say, a warm spring or a warm autumn, this shade from Chanel in Healthy Pink is such a beautiful no makeup makeup tone. It's going to give you just that little bit of a flush of color to the skin. Appears like it's your natural healthy skin tone, playing up that glow that the color palette would naturally have. Anything I have left on my brush, I'm just taking to a few other places on the face that I like to apply blush. So expanding to the side of the face, bridge of the nose and to the chin, because when we would naturally flush it, the color goes a little bit all over instead of just concentrating here on the cheeks. I wanna go ahead and set this down. I'm gonna use the Flower Beauty Light Illusion Powder in shade L1 Porcelain. This is gonna be a little bit more of a neutral warm shade. So it's just going to help further neutralize with a little bit of warmth added to my skin tone to make the color products that we apply on top feel more realistic. Warm tones appear to have a little bit more of a brightness to them than our cool tones. And a great example I always think about is when I work for MAC Cosmetics. All the foundations are going to be neutral cool or neutral warm. Now, compared to what we're talking about today, that's all reversed. NW50 versus NC50. NW is the cool pink tones and NW is the warm golden tones. NW50 compared to NC50 is going to look a lot darker and that's because cool undertones almost have this effect of absorbing light and appearing a little bit deeper compared to golden or warm undertones. They tend to bounce light back so they look a little bit brighter. That's something that even though winter and spring colors are going to be higher contrast. The contrast is more evident in the winter color palettes compared to spring because spring has a higher influence of that yellow brightness, which is going to make things just appear overall brighter and less contrasty. The matte extra dimension skin finish in the shade Double Gleam. This is a beautiful gold shade. It almost has this white base. When you apply it to the skin, it makes the skin just look very radiant and very plump. Uh, if, you, if we compare this side to this side, this side just comes alive with the highlight. So for this look, I'm gonna keep my highlight just to the higher points of the cheek, and then I'm gonna move on to bronzing. Contour tends to be a little bit harder for the spring seasons to pull off, but specifically, it's a little bit harder for true or warm spring to pull off because not only is it going to be a little bit more shaded, meaning it has a higher influence of gray, which is inherently a little bit cooler in undertone, it's going to just feel a little drab because you're taking away from the overall brightness of the skin. What I like to do is look for a bronzing product with a low level light reflect. That way it's gonna add that same amount of glow to the skin that we would naturally find when looking at bare skin. So I'm gonna use the IT Cosmetics Ombre Radiance Bronzer and this is in the shade Warm Radiance. I'm gonna use my powder brush. This is a BK Beauty number 103 and instead of targeting one specific shade, I am just going to swirl and get a mix. I'm not going to go as low as I would for a contour, but I'm not going to go as high as I would as a bronzer. I'm going to take it in the middle, which is sometimes referred to as a bronzer placement. And your bronzer placement, you can apply it wherever makes you happy. This is just where, in my mind, it's going to work best for the look that I have in mind. Whatever I've left, I'm going to run on my nose and on my chin. I'm also applying the bronzer to my ears and my neck because I need to warm those up to feel more cohesive with the color that we're about to apply to our skin or else things are just gonna feel very kind of floating in middle of nowhere. It's just gonna feel very off balance. So to balance everything out, I'm gonna warm up my neck and my ears and whatever I've left, I'm just gonna run it on the backs of my hands to warm those up so they don't feel as stark because anytime I alter my face, 
color. I like to do a little something to my hands because it drives me crazy <laughs> when the hands, neck, and face are all different colors. So if I was doing this with makeup, I would use something like a MAC face and body, something that you can apply that stays and doesn't transfer much just to create more balance. But for the video, a little bit of powder bronzer on the back of the hands will work. I'm going to keep my blush a little bit more as a background or supporting feature on the face because if we look at the two looks from the community tab, the winner of the look had more of a statement on the lip, whereas the second place was more focused on the eye. I want to kind of go in the middle and choose something that's have a little bit more, a little bit more of a supporting feature. So the first blush I'm going to use is going to be from the brand The Same, and this is one of their single blushes in the shade CR01 Naked Peach, and it's just a very light tone. And I'm going to use this here on the front of my cheek. If you've seen any of my non-seasonal color videos, I have been loving this placement of creating a trio of cheek color. So in the front of the cheek, this would be referred to as an expanding shade because this does have a little bit of a light reflect to it. And it is just ever so slightly lighter and brighter than my skin tone. So that's going to help kind of firm up this portion of the cheek. And then to fill in between where I place that blusher shade and the outer corner where the bronzer is, I'm going to use a blush from the brand Peri Para. This is the Pure Blushed Sunshine Cheeks in the shade 01 calm pink and this is going to be a little bit more of a neutral pink so this is going to work well for bright spring true spring or light spring and i'm just gonna apply that right between that previous blush and the bronzer and then just to soften that down i'm gonna take my powder brush that i applied the bronzer with and i'm just going to gently sweep over just to soften it down and then with that whatever residual i picked up from there i'm gonna run right to the side of the forehead and over the nose and chin so before i move on to the eyes. I want to get some of the other features on. So my eyebrows are a little bit cooler in their tone. So I'm going to use the e.l.f. Wow Brow in the shade Neutral Brown to warm up my eyebrows a little bit. Non-seasonal color related. I have tried so many tinted brow gels over the years. This is my constant favorite. Easy to work with and it's affordable. My favorite things. Easy, affordable makeup. And the look I did last year for True Spring was a little bit more subtle. So I want to add a little extra oomph to this look. Laura Mercier Longwear Lip Liner in the shade Rosewood. And I applied such a sheer amount of the Chanel lip balm. Applying the lip pencil on top, it's only going to help warm it up even more. It's so fascinating how changing colors and using more complementary colors and using more cohesive coloring can change how a color looks on you. I have been so disappointed with this lip pencil since I purchased it. I never reached for it because it looks so orange on me. However, with a warm foundation and warmer colors on the face, this feels really, really nice. I have no idea if this is still around, but the Laura Mercier Longwear Lip Liner in the shade Rosewood, if you were someone, I would say this color is maybe best suited for someone who is either a warm or true spring or warm true autumn. This would be a great everyday lip liner for you. This was more of a statement lip color, so I want to add a pop of color. This color is one I actually purchased just because a subscriber recommended and she said this was one of her favorite lip colors. This is from e.l.f. This is the moisturizing lipstick in the shade Pink Mix. This is another product I think was discontinued. However, there's similar colors on the market and when I'm creating a spring makeup look, I tend to work with the products I have in my collection just because I don't wear these colors very often. So I'm going to start by applying a little bit. So there is e.l.f. Pink Minx, and I want to add a little bit of gloss because light reflection and gloss go together. This is the Fenty Gloss Balm in the shade Sweet Mouth, and this is just a very kind of neutral peach gloss. I want to start by adding a little bit of depth to the root of the lash. I'm going to use the Sicily Fido Coal Star Waterproof Pencil in the shade Sparkling Brown. And for this shade, I'm just going to run in my upper tight line. For anyone wondering why I decided to apply eyeliner before any type of eyeshadow, that's because I want to keep my lid overall bright as brightness is going to be part of the contrast moodiness that I'm creating with this look. If any little bits of eyeliner smudged onto my lid, cotton swab 
to get off any little bits of smudged eyeliner. Now we can go on to building our eye look. I have assembled four of my favorite Sydney Grace eyeshadows and a cheek color. So we are gonna build a look using these colors today. So to start off, I wanna neutralize and warm up my eye, the Sydney Grace Matte Eyeshadow in the shade Mellow Yellow. And I'm gonna use a BK Beauty A501. And I wanna use the shade lightly just to set all over my eyelid. My eyelids are like many other people's. They are thin, so you can find unwanted redness and blueness showing through. Yellow eyeshadow as a base is going to act as a brightener. And it's also gonna help have some neutralizing qualities because if we look at our color wheel, opposite of red is green. But instead of using a green eyeshadow, because green can sometimes feel a little foreign to the skin tone unless someone is very olive. So when I warmed my skin up today, I went for more of a yellow. And using a yellow shade is going to help neutralize the unwanted redness and it's going to act as a brightening shade. So use very lightly, it's gonna almost work like applying a skin tone shade. Another fun way to think about a yellow eyeshadow is think about using a yellow eyeshadow as like a banana powder for your eyes. Banana powders were a huge trend a few years ago go because they helped to brighten up the areas of the face where you applied them. Using a matte yellow eyeshadow can have a very similar effect. Next, I want to start creating some dimension in the eyes. So I'm going to use a mid-tone matte shade in the shade Summer Magic. So this can be a little bit more peachy to play with the lip and the cheek color. I'm going to use a BK Beauty A502 and I'm just going to apply this high in my socket line to start creating shape to my eye. You can apply this more straight, you can round it or keep it here towards the outer corner. But I want to apply this and create a little bit more of a dramatic effect. I want to apply this almost like an exaggerated V. So going from the outer corner of my eye, dragging out to the tail of my eyebrow, then cutting straight across towards the inner corner of my eye. And this is going to help give me a base. Before I go to this side, I want to take my large fluffy clean brush. This is a BK Beauty A503, and I'm gonna softly blend over this. And when I'm blending, I want to have my angle, my I want to have the bristles and the tip of the brush angled up at about a 45 degree angle. That way it's going to push this color up towards the brow because I want to keep my lid bright and light. So this portion down here, by angling my brush upward slightly, it's going to keep the lid nice and bright. So now that I have a clear example of where I need this color to be or where I want this color to be, I can build up and just soften out and blend, angling my brush slightly upwards to diffuse the color up and out to help keep the eyelid nice and bright. I'm gonna now use a smaller brush. This is the BK Beauty 8504 Sydney Grace Matte Eyeshadow in the shade Mom Ride. And this is going to be a dark, warm chocolate brown. For this, it might be helpful to have a small handheld mirror because you want to be pretty exact with your placement. Tilt my chin up and look down to the mirror. That way my eyelid is stretched. Using my brush at that 45 degree angle, I'm gonna gently apply just where I want that eyeshadow to be. And I'm using this to sketch, taking a little bit more and applying it on the outer corner of the eye. Then I'm gonna switch to a slightly larger brush. This is the BK Beauty A502, the brush I was using to apply the orange eyeshadow with. And with this brush angled up at 45 degrees, I'm going to start doing small buffing motions to blend that eyeshadow. Roughly blended out, I can now switch to windshield wiper motions, keeping it very, very controlled. And when I pull to the inside, I don't want to extend and bring this past the center portion of my eyelid, because even though I did not apply any color here. If I use that windshield wiper motion, pull it all the way in, it's going to darken and dilute the brightness that I want to keep here on the inner corner. So just kind of 
keeping it focused from the outer corner to the midpoint of the eye. And you can even use little buffing circular motions. My large blending brush. And again, angled up at 45 degrees. Windshield wiper motion side to side from outer corner to the midpoint. You can do a few little buffing circular motions just to help diffuse it if that helps. And we can see this side to this side. It's going to have a little bit more depth. It just helps to brighten and boost the overall effect of the color. So I'm going to continue using the darkest shade, which was Mom Ride that we used here in the outer corner. And I'm going to use the BK Beauty A504, which is the smallest brush we're using. And I'm going to tap off most of the excess. And I want to go for this, I want to apply right under the iris or the colored portion of my eye, keeping it concentrated right to that point. Now I'm gonna go up to my next largest brush, which is the BK Beauty A502. And I'm gonna go back to the orange eyeshadow called Summer Magic. And I wanna use this to connect the outer corner to the mid portion of the eye. And then I'm gonna blend right over top of that chocolate shade. I can't remember what I called the video, but there was a video where I talked about creating an inverted triangle shape on the eye. This is very reminiscent of that, although we are going to tweak it slightly to play up the brightness of the look. Now I'm gonna use the BK Beauty A503, and I'm gonna go back to the matte yellow called Mellow Yellow, and I'm gonna use this just to soften up the edge of that shadow. Very, very soft, slight placement. When I'm creating makeup looks, I don't really ever draft out the type of look I want to create. Although I will pull the products ahead of time. That way I can go ahead and work on doing the description box and the links for the video. But it's so fascinating seeing all these colors come together. It's kind of taking me down memory lane and it kind of makes sense to me why when I learned about seasonal color, it was like such a, this is an incredible moment. These colors here are very reminiscent of that era. I would say around 2014, 15, 16, up through the end of the decade, where warm eyeshadows, specifically warm neutrals, were the big rage. And I struggled wearing those, but you know, when I was at Sephora or when I was at MAC, we had trend days where we needed to play up the seasonal colors. So that was time when I was really big into self-tanning and self-tanners use DHA. DHA tends to have an orange yellow effect on the skin. I would always have to warm up my skin tone to make these colors work and match my body skin. And having this warmer look, it's taking me down that memory lane where I would wear these warmer tones. I haven't done anything like this and such a long time because I haven't worn fake tan in goodness two, three years. So now let's add the brightness I keep referencing. I'm using a Sydney Grace pressed pigment in the shade Hidden Treasure. And I'm gonna use the BK Beauty A501. And again, I wanna tilt my chin up, look down, stretch the eyelid, press and wiggle, little circular buffing motions. As I need to, I'm going to turn my brush. That way the curve is hugging the socket line. A great way you can look at this is think of this as your lazy girl's way to create a cut crease because you are just sketching out the shape you've already applied. When I have less of my brush, I'm going to connect the inner corner of my eye to the darker shade we applied here in the middle. Next, I can use my BK Beauty A503, which is a large blending brush, and I'm just gonna go on the edge of that shimmer we just applied and blend. And again, under my eye, I'm just gonna blend back and forth to connect those two colors on the lower so it's not so harsh of a transition. So now that I have the shimmer color on, I want to go through and just kind of tweak it to the point where I am happy with the look. So I'm gonna use the brush I used with the darkest color, no additional product, and I'm just gonna go on the seam of the lightest shimmer color in the matte outer corner. Then I'm gonna move up to a slightly larger brush that I was using to apply the orange eyeshadow. And again, blend on the seam, angling up at a 45 to keep the eyelid nice and bright. And then back to the large fluffy brush that we've been using to blend everything. And the reason I'm not applying any additional product to the brushes is because I don't want to add more saturation to the eye. I just want to use the residual product that we've already got on our brushes just to diffuse things out. Now to get a better sense of the eye look, I want to build up the lashes. So I am going to go ahead and apply my 
L'Oreal Lash Paradise Primer and the L'Oreal Lash Paradise in the shade Black Brown and apply a really thick, generous coat to create more contrast in the eye look. So I'm gonna apply that off camera and I will be right back. That really helped to bump up the contrast of this look. And also another little side note about product. I had to check my calendar because I'm a person who <laughs> keeps little reminders on my calendar when to replace my mascara. So two weeks from today, it will be time to replace my mascaras. And all I can say is this mascara, the L'Oreal Lash Paradise, and this is just regular formula, not waterproof. This started off as a really good mascara, but as it's aged, it has just gotten better and better. For what I like, I like a slightly drier mascara that builds easily and holds a curl. This combination is really, really good. And when it was fresh and still very much of a wet formula, I found sometimes I would get a little bit of transfer, but after about a week or two being opened, it was just wonderful. And now almost at the three month mark, it is just like my perfect mascara. So I love this so much. True spring or a warm spring makeup look. This would be a great kind of everyday look. You've got a little bit of va va voom on the eyes, a little bit on the lips, but as you know, I'm someone who likes to dabble in playing with our neighboring palettes. So for this look, either borrowing from bright or clear spring or light or soft spring. For that, what we can do is I'm going to use a Sydney Grace. This is technically a highlighter, but I find it's almost more like a blush. This is called Keep It A Secret. This is a little bit more of a warm pink, but it's more so of a neutral linear warm pink because compared to the eyes, it's definitely cooler toned than the eyes. So I'm going to apply that just ever so slightly in the middle of the cheek as that's going to help kind of tie in to the lip color and kind of add a little bit of brightness to the look. So borrow from your sister palette, which is going to be warm, warm autumn or true autumn. I'm going to take a little bit of my bronzer, a little bit of the Peri Para blush I used, mix those two together, and then I'm gonna now dilute the more pinky shade I just applied from Sydney Grace. Tone that down and I'm going to remove my lip color. I'm gonna use the same lip pencil, so the Laura Mercier Longwear Lip Pencil in the shade Rosewood, and I'm just gonna roughly line and fill in my lips. Now I'm gonna use the Lisa Eldridge Velvet Lip Color in the shade Velvet Fawn, and this is gonna be a little bit more of a slightly more warm toned neutral color. So here's how our bright spring smoky eye looks with a warm or true autumn nude lipstick. What keeps it from being something that would be easy to wear with more of a no makeup look for warm spring is it's quite muted. It's more of a desaturated nude work compared to the eyes. It doesn't have that same brightness to them. So what you could do is if you want to do something like this, we're going to go back to the e.l.f. lipstick in the shade Pink Minx and unplug this just in the center and top it off with just just a little bit of the Fenty Sweet Mouth Gloss. And that is going to give us our final, more dramatic, warm spring or true spring makeup look. I have to say that I am way happier with this look than I thought I was going to be. And we got to do so much. I got to give you tips about how to apply, how to borrow from your neighbor palettes, how to borrow from your sister or contrasting palette, and just create a look that I think is so much fun. I would definitely love to hear your thoughts in the comments section. And let me know, is this a look that you would wear? I would tweak the colors for my everyday, but I enjoy this look. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section. And if you made it this far, make sure you give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more seasonal color as well as just general makeup fun. And if you're curious about any of the products, I have linked them in the description box down below for your convenience. That will be all for today. Thank you so much. I hope you're taking care of yourself wherever it is you are in the world. Until next time, bye y'all.